A while back, I trained a whole team to level 100 before the first gym in Let's Go Pikachu. And today, I'm going to take on the rest of the game with them. You might think that this video would be some kind of victory lap, like the time that I did this with an Inkeda in Sapphire. But I don't think victory lap is the best way to describe what I'm about to go through, because I'm going to be taking a ton of L's, without even losing any battles. You see, this level 100 team I have is made up of only traded Pokémon, meaning they only have a small chance to obey anything I say until I get my 8th badge, making every single battle a potential nightmare, taking minutes at a time. It's okay though, I'm used to this, because I have an Nintendog save file from before my voice changed. Shake. 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 Please shake my hand. Shake! So I guess now let's go at it, and let's take on Let's Go with this disobedient level 100 team. Let's go. Believe I should be live now. I do have a timer going. Like, the smallest youngster in last battles could end up taking longer than some gym battles. So I'm going to be timing every single battle just to see how long some of these battles can go and what battle ends up taking us the longest. And I'll be playing with this with my Pokeball Plus as well. And uh, we're starting this out at 33 hours and 34 minutes. So let's get into this run. Gonna go straight to Brock right now. So we're starting things off with the gym battle. I have no doubt in my mind that we will defeat Brock. And I doubt he will even lay a scratch on my Pokemon. But the real question is, will my Pokemon obey me? And how long will it take for us to defeat Brock? And it's gonna be this way until the 8th badge. So this will be interesting. Let's take on our first battle. So Twitch chat had me take on the trainers before Brock, even though I could just do a loop-de-loop -loop and skip them entirely, just to see what kind of pain was in store for me on this run. Going into this, I hadn't done too much research on how Pokemon Obedience actually works, but it turns out that during this earliest part of the game before we get our first badge from Brock, the chances of my level 100 traded Pokemon obeying me will be at their absolute lowest and gradually go up as the run progresses and I get more badges. This is because the obedience formula is based off of three factors. The maximum level that traded Pokemon will obey you at, which is level 10 by default without any badges, the level of the traded Pokemon you're using, and a random number generated between 0 and 255. The game determines whether or not the Pokemon will obey by adding together your Pokemon's level and the max controllable level, then multiplying that sum by the random number and dividing it by 256. If the result of that is greater than or equal to the max controllable level, the Pokemon will not obey the move selected that turn. With where we're at right now, our Pokemon will only obey us if the random number is 23 or below, meaning that we have a 24 out of 256, or a 9.4% chance of our Pokemon actually obeying us on any given turn. And in order to win battles in this game, we have to have our Pokemon actually listen and obey us. Because unlike previous generations where a disobedient Pokemon can occasionally at least pick a different move and still use it, there is no chance of our Pokemon using any moves at all if they disobey in Let's Go. And in the time that it took for me to explain all that, we're still now in our first battle. Even though our chances of obedience will slightly go up and get better as the run progresses and we get more badges, we're still in for a wild ride because... These battles were still not the longest ones we've had. Buckle up. I want to see what trainer battle, whether it be just a regular trainer or a gym leader, takes the longest. And look right here, Cedro obeyed me, let's go. That is our first battle. There we go. Two minutes and 15 seconds. What a start. <laughs> so now on to the next guy, who says we're light years away from facing Brock. 10,000 light years. Only took two minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> Now let's take on Brock. Brock has a whole storm coming that he doesn't even realize. Except, I was the one who had a whole storm coming and didn't even realize. I said earlier that I knew for sure that I'd get through Brock without him leaving a single scratch on my Pokémon. But I didn't account for my Pokémon leaving a scratch on themselves. My Seedra sat there napping and hitting itself over and over again. And Brock just stood there, winning an impossible matchup. Brock's just sitting here in absolute bewilderment. He has like his fists clenched, and he's just like, what is going on? Because like, he's, he recognizes the power of these Pokemon. He sees that they're level 100. It's almost like we're letting him win. 
This is much more brutal than I thought. Body slam time. Flattened like a pancake. Oh yeah, you thought it was cool that they were bleachers. Oh, flat onyx. Let's go. We have defeated Brock. I'm gonna stop the timer. Four minutes and 56 seconds to beat Brock. And now, we're going to do this number. Flattened. On the way to Mount Moon, I skipped the youngster who has the motto that I live by. So in his stead, let me tell you, shorts are comfy and easy to wear. And then, as I entered Mount Moon, I encountered something that I wasn't prepared for. A legend who even makes youngster Tristan look like a joke. A trainer who refuses to go all out in battle. Unless you bring a full team of level 100 Pokemon. Lass Evelyn. Yeah, I guess I gotta fight this Lass. My first mistake was thinking that she was just another Lass. Just another one of those standard roadblock trainers that you fight. And my second mistake was not starting the timer. So the battle took an additional 22 seconds to what's displayed on the timer at the end of it. It totally slipped my mind. That's how hard I underestimated Evelyn. And I will pay dearly for that. Oh, I meant to—I forgot to start the timer on this battle. I'll start it right now. And if this goes on for a ridiculously long amount of time, I can go back and like account for what the time would really be on it. If this becomes the longest battle in the run. And since there's only one Pokemon, I doubt it will be that. This diabolical Bellsprout continuously used growth until it reached sizes that dwarf even Gigantamax Pokemon. And then it wrapped its strange twiggy body around my team, gradually dealing damage every turn. If that wasn't enough damage, it also lashed at my poor unassuming team with Vine Whip, making even my strong, powerful Tauros want to cry. One by one, the brave warriors that I spent over 30 hours training to level 100 before the first gym fell at the hands of Evelyn and her Bellsprout. Our final hope was Graveler. It's a miracle we took down Brock at this point. Okay, that barely did anything. Oh, let's go Graveler. Pulling through for me like that. Waking up. I just need you to use one move. One move. One move. Gotta give this Bellsprout some credit. Freed from rap. So, we still have a chance. Let's go! Not swept by a Bellsprout. <laughs> what a nightmare. What an actual nightmare. Last Evelyn, you are one of the strongest trainers I have ever encountered. That was one of the most incredible trainers I have ever encountered in any Pokemon game. The way that she used Rap and Vine Whip and Growth was on another level. Now it's giving me a, t a catching tutorial? Does it know how many Pokemon I've caught on this? Evelyn for next Elite Four member. Yeah. Alright, should I heal or should I just keep going through Rock Tunnel with this Graveler? Keep going? Okay, let's keep going. Gotta chase Team Rocket. I'm avoiding you. I'm scared of lasses now. Here's a youngster. This might be the warrior who takes us down. Did you come to explore the cave too? I came to get out of this cave, man. Man, Josh is gonna have such a great story if he takes me down here. He'll go to, like, Twitter being like, Guys, I took down, like, this trainer with six level 100 Pokemon with my level 8 Sandshrew. I think I'm gonna be the best trainer in the world, guys. Oh, no. Sand attack. This means if our move goes through, it might miss. <laughs> And we go down. Oh man, we've already lost a battle. I didn't even start the timer that time, so that's okay. I'll start the timer next time. So I went back and got my revenge on Josh before he actually went to Twitter and hit send on that tweet. Then I got the good old Helix Fossil, and then I was out of Mount Moon. Now it's time to take on our second gym, Misty. Okay, so um, I don't know if we can challenge this gym yet, because we have to show a Pokemon that's at least level 15, and our whole team... I don't think it meets that criteria. Let's get that second badge, y'all. What's my policy on Pokemon? What's your spaghetti policy here? In the grand scheme of things for this run, my battle with Misty was pretty long. But after fighting Lass Evelyn, 
This fight still felt like a joke in comparison. Her Pokemon really weren't doing all that much to me, and it was mostly a matter of me just trying to get that roll to get my Pokemon to actually use their moves. At this point in the game, our Pokemon have a 16% chance of obeying me every single turn. And when we beat Misty, that'll go up to a 23% chance. And trust me when I say every little percent helps. There we go. Washed. I don't know if it was more of me having horrendous luck earlier or me having good luck now, but after fighting Misty, most of the Nugget Bridge went by very fast. I managed to breeze through the whole next segment of the game without any really good stories. So I guess let's skip to Lieutenant Surge. Now it's Surge time. Nothing really too crazy happened in the Lieutenant Surge fight. I led with my Seedra, who was at an obvious type disadvantage, and believe it or not, it was able to make it through the entire battle without fainting. The battle was also on the shorter side compared to Brock and Misty, who were 5 minutes and 7 minutes respectively. I'll say this again, I didn't research the disobedience mechanics before I started this, so I was totally unaware that it was actually getting easier for my Pokemon to obey me throughout the run, as I collected more badges. And if I went out of story order with the badges, which you can actually do in this game, I probably could have boosted those chances even more. But I just went in story order. We're looking at a 28.9% chance of my Pokemon obeying me after this battle. And there we go, there goes Lieutenant Surge. Honorably discharged. If you can read that, my handwriting is pretty atrocious sometimes. Alrighty, that's three badges down, five to go. Then I made my way towards the rock tunnel, where I observed another very weird quirk of Pokemon disobedience. Fake out. <laughs> what? That bypassed the flinch. It bypassed the flinch to go to bed. Never seen that before. Anything is a no-scope if you do it without the scope. I like that attitude. That's very true. Never thought of it that way. Right now I'm no-scope beating all of Let's Go Pikachu with a disobedient team. Yeah, most of us are probably all no-scoping life right now. I no-scoped my way through the rock tunnel, with most battles only taking around a minute or two. Then I went over to the Celadon Gym for my fourth badge. But in order to get in, I had to show the girl at the front a very cute Pokemon. Let's see. Which one of these is the cutest? Raticate. Super cute, yes. Raticate smells good. This girl is getting demolished by Graveler. Hope she doesn't get flattened. Let's do some weed whacking. Just falling asleep right mid-conversation. Mid She'd fit right in on my Pokemon team. This will be normal to her. Just my Pokemon falling asleep mid-battle. Just fits her personality. And as expected, Erica's gym battle was a literal snooze fest. I used Arbok in this battle because I'd hardly used it in this playthrough before that. And I kept pushing forward. Knowing that after this battle, I'd be at a 33.6% chance of my Pokémon obeying me every turn. Yeah, oh, Erica mode. Time to take a nap. Yeah, these Pokémon really are wasting turns whenever they use Sleep Powder on them. Because they don't have to worry about that, they're going to sleep anyway. And they'll wake themselves up whenever they want to too. Like, that they work completely on their own will. To me, I'm just the guy who takes them on adventures. They do everything else the way they want to. And if that means spending 11 minutes getting destroyed by a level 8 Bellsprout, and that's, if that's what they want to do, I'll let them as their chaperone. Just as long as things don't get too out of hand. Oh, Poison Jab again! Arbok! I guess Arbok wanted to win. As Chaperone, I approve. 
That was a fast gym battle for three Pokemon. You know what? I'll try and write. We whacked. Weed whacked. There we go. But man, we've cleared four out of eight badges. But now we have a whole Team Rocket storyline to go through. So let's do that. At this point in the game, I started to see more and more first turn victories. It felt good to finish a battle in less than a minute. It also felt good knowing no one else was putting up a fight like Last Evelyn did. I wonder if something was messed up with the collision when they made that bridge right there, so they decided to make it a cutscene instead of, like, actually something you walk across. I think of that as a likely theory for what the decision making was behind that. <laughs> nice first turn horn attack. Nice first turn body slam. Oh, that battle could not have gone any better. That was that was magnificent. Versus Giovanni, I wanted to test something out with one of Tauros' moves I hadn't used. Outrage. Normally, Outrage lets you attack immediately the next turn without even putting in an input for fight. But it looks like the disobedience overrides that. So it wasn't very useful. First turn. That's one. Oh, two rocket battles in a row! What the heck, dude? What the heck, dude? Jesse and James going down just like that, blasting off again. I think them blasting off like that. Baja Blast, sip. Perfect time for that. It really feels like most of the challenge of this was in the first half of the game. The next three gym leaders, each having four Pokemon, Koga, Sabrina, and Blaine, all fell pretty easily at the hands of my team. In fact, one of Koga's Pokemon even took itself out for me. I will say that I did have a little trouble getting into Sabrina's gym, though. Pokemon that's at least level 45? Oh, I don't know about that. I think we're gonna have to do some level grinding. I don't think I encountered a single battle that took longer than five minutes during this portion of the game. That is, until I reached the final battle, separating me from full obedience from my Pokémon. The final gym battle with Giovanni. My battle with Last Evelyn still stood at the top as the longest battle of this run so far, sitting at 11 minutes and 56 seconds, accounting for the 22 seconds where I was forgetting to time it. This battle with Giovanni was the last battle to threaten that record. Would Evelyn reign supreme, or would Giovanni dethrone her? Let's find out. But before we get into that, we need to write down painful one-liners for the gym leaders we just defeated. I'm gonna say poisoned, but not lethally poisoned, because uh, I don't want to actually kill Koga with this. Boom. Blaine, you have been in every definition of the word trivialized. Boom. You got roasted too. Trivialized and roasted. So what separated Giovanni from the rest of the pack is that his Pokemon were actually at a level where they could do some serious damage to my team. I basically started out this battle with half my team fainted since Graveler was demolished on one of the first turns, and I couldn't be bothered to go heal for this when my whole team's level 100. Man, Giovanni is ruining this perfectly good tile floor, and this really nice looking building with all these earthquakes. Hate to see it. Assuming I did the math correctly and Let's Go still follows the same obedience formula as the main series games, I had a 44.6% chance of my Pokémon obeying every turn. But a lot of the time, luck wasn't on my side for this particular fight. Because if your Pokemon decides to take a nap, you've got a 0% chance of them obeying you for a turn or two. Also, more importantly, Giovanni's Pokemon were resilient, and some of them took multiple hits to take down, which was a first for this run. It wasn't very long until Giovanni brought me down to my last leg. 
even when I still had Arbok out on the field and had one more Pokemon remaining because Arbok is a snake and doesn't have any legs. Let's go Arbok, toughing it out like that? A true hero. Yeah, there's a good possibility I might go down in this fight. And if I do, I'll just get back up and do it again. I was down to one final Pokemon, Tauros. And I needed Tauros to come in clutch at the end. But instead, it came in clutch with showing another interesting weird quirk of disobedience in the move Outrage. Whoa, it pretended not to notice from the Outrage and still became confused due to fatigue. That's actually a very interesting mechanic right there. It's like the Outrage happened, but it replaced the Outrage with getting confused for the turn. Very bizarre. Then, after showing off that mechanic, against all odds, Tauros decided to come in clutch. Oh, ho, ho, let's go, Tauros! The MVT, the most valuable Tauros! And it landed a crit, too. It had no reason to land a crit right there, but it did. And this officially makes Lass Evelyn in Mount Moon with her level 8 Bellsprout the longest battle of this run. And Giovanni? arrested for his crimes, for running a crime syndicate. Then, in another stream session on April 29th, the actual victory lap began. With my fully obedient team, I was on the way to take on the Pokemon League. And I decided that in order to add an element of challenge to this, since there was no challenge left anymore, I would see if taking on the entire Pokemon League would take more time than it took for me to take on Lass Evelyn. And so, the battle began. To be fair, I did give Evelyn a little bit of a competitive advantage by turning off battle animations in the Elite Four. But to be fair, it's already five against one. And they're supposed to be the strongest trainers in the region anyway. They should be ashamed if this battle versus this girl in Mount Moon takes longer than my entire set of battles against them. Going back now, I think it's even more fitting that I named my rival Time on this file, since the final battle of it really was a race against time. But now I'll stop yapping for a little bit, sit back and enjoy, and watch these two battles battle against each other.
I think it's got just enough HP to not have a healing item used on it. That's it. Wow. 11 minutes, 27 seconds. That was definitely shorter than that Bellsprout fight. <laughs> but yeah, that was such a nice little victory lap. It felt so nice having my Pokemon actually listen to me for once. Because I forgot what that felt like over the course of this. Alrighty. But finally, I started the gameplay for this in July of last year. I finished the video for it in October. And it's almost May now. And we finally finished this run. Was it worth it to train that team to level 100 before the first gym? Maybe not if we were expecting a fun and easy journey, but if we were expecting a fun and tedious journey, it was super worth it. Super, super worth it. It was a really fun time. First time playing through a game like this uh, with a disobedient team since like I was eight years old too. So it feels good. And check it out, they're all just revolving around me now. This is the new Pokemon Solar System. We got Eradicate, we got Tauros for the Tauruses out there. We got a camera change to not show the next member of the team. And we're just running towards something. I don't know, maybe we're in a black hole or something right now. But congratulations, champion. Congratulations, champion. And that's it for this video that I just got around to editing two months after doing it. Got lots more on the way, so stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.